Hey, it's Dan Larson and welcome to the newest Synthesize Sunday episode. And as I promised or as I suggested before, we are going to make a very nice Skrillexy kind of growth sound. How awesome is this? So the sound itself is pretty nice. And let's start with the sub because you know I have two instances of operator in this rack. And the second one, I mean the bottom one, is only a simple sign, but it is modulated by another sign to add some nice harmonies to it, you know, because you don't want to use a simple sign, it just sound yeah, I don't know, like too weak. And this is all. <laughs> it is very simple. So the second operator, or the first operator actually is the sound is the synth which generates the sound itself and it is again not a real big deal because you can create a very nice growth sound from even a saw wave with some proper processing and this is what i did before i made a very nice growth from a saw wave and it sounds pretty cool maybe i will show it to you uh, a little later but today i'm going to cover you how i made this growth sound so let's check the operators i'm using this fm chain here which means that we are having operator a which is modulated by operator B, but B is modulated by C and D at the same time, like not serial, but parallel. So anyway, the first operator is a simple sign. The second one is modulated by another sign, but this time I added some, well, very high harmonics, very high frequency harmonics. And uh, the third one, you know, this operates only B, operator C operates or modulates B, is uh, like a noisy kind of waveform where I chopped back the very lows. And again, operator B is modulated by another operator, this time operator D, which looks like a sort of saw 3 kind of waveform, but it's a little different, you know, it looks like a distorted sine wave or something. The only thing what we need to mention here, I mean in the operator section on the oscillators, is I use some detuning on operator C and D, and the purpose of this to push the sound away from the very digital kind of sound where, you know, when you don't have any imperfections, that is very important if you want to create organic sound, some imperfections and modulations and, you know, the voices are very important here. What is more important is the band pace filter, because without the band pace filter it sounds like this. I'm not sure if you can hear those very annoying uh, top kind of sounds, very high frequency kind of sounds. And that is because we didn't take care of that. So this is why I'm using a band pace filter. And again, it brings out some very nice uh, evil kind of sounds or, or frequencies, uh, which, you know, I didn't hear when I disabled this filter. I don't know, the result is a lot or a lot more organic for me. And to make the sound even more organic, and it is again very important, let me show them without them, because you know these two devices are pretty important to create very nice organic growth. <laughs> It's la it sounds like a, a motorcycle noise or something. It doesn't. Uh, it just doesn't remind me a, a monster or something, uh, because you know we are lacking of voices here, and this is why I added that chorus. And this time it is a lot, lot better. And again, I use another device which I made a synthesized Sunday episode like I don't know a month ago, which is a multi-band dimension expander. This is what I added here. I use some. Um, pitch stereo effect, what it does, and what it does is I split up the frequency spectrum into several bands and I added frequency shifters. Yeah, that's it. I use different frequencies on different bands and different channels too. And this creates a very nice wobbly kind of effect, which is pretty nice. You add a organic tone, a, you know, a voice is kind of mimic to your sound. Anyway, without it. <laughs> And with it, it sounds like this. It definitely has some nice touch to it. So these are very important to push your sound away from the very metallic and very artificial kind of tone into a more organic tone. I use an EQ to chop off the very lows because you know we are going to use a different operator as a sub, so we don't need to conflict them. The second one is an auto filter in high pace mode, and this creates some very nice, vovoli kind of sound to it. 
So let me show it to you. Okay, very nice. So the next one is two OTTs because you know we cannot live without OTTs, especially if you want to create growth. Very nice organic kind of growth. Some two EQs to push back a little on the frequencies what, you know, just really annoys the, f the ear. These noisy, papery kind of tones, which sounds like something was resonating. Okay, and after the EQ, we are having another auto filter to boost up those vowels again a lot more. Very cool. A phaser. You know, you always want to use phaser to deepen your sound. where I automated the drive at knob to my macro. Okay, let's step further. We have vocal A EQ8 preset, which you can find here in the EQ8 formant folder. And this is the A, which I modified a little because we, oops, yeah. Oh, well, okay, this is how it looks originally. So what I did here is I changed this dot to this guy and this uh, this dot to not a low pace filter, but this, um, I don't know how to call it stuff. So, okay, you get the idea, let me undo them. Okay, and what I do here is I'm automating the scale knob or the scale slider, I don't know what is that, with the macro. Again, two OTTs, because we tweak the sound too much, we really need to stick them together. A utility tool to pull back a little on the sides, but it is not really necessary. An overdrive to add some more noise. Basically, generate some top end. A limiter, just a limiter, you know, there is nothing to talk about here. And an EQ to get rid of the 4000 Hz range and some cuts on the very highs because uh, we don't want to bleed our ears. And another rack, which is, I don't know why I put them in a rack, because it's just a simple saturator, a bit warmer preset. An EQ8 again to cut a little on the 400 hertz area and again at around seven, seven kilohertz. Um, nothing fancy here. just to get rid of the annoying frequencies. Another phaser, but this time I don't modulate anything. It's just, um, you know, it works like an EQ2. It cuts holes in the spectrum. And an OTC at the end. Of course, after the full rack, you know, when I can tweak or just uh, bring together the sub and the top bass, a limiter and a signal analyzer, which is not really important here. It doesn't do anything really. So this is the best growl ever <laughs> as I saved it into my library. And I hope you enjoyed it. So I'm not going to share this preset because it's too good. So go and experiment yourself. I hope you enjoyed this. This is a real Skrillex kind of growl sound. I was there, Larson, and don't forget to subscribe and do drop your comments and like the video. This really means a lot for me. So see you later, guys. Bye bye.